and your script. Okay, guys, my name is J.D. Ellaby. I'm a Major League Baseball scout. I wrote a novella, uh, Alone in the Galactic Revolution, and I wanted to adapt it to a script. And it's it's a, a futuristic sci-fi dystopia of, of a young girl who's torn from her family and uh, stranded on a galact on a, on a lunar outpost away from her family with a, a just a, a outpost full of children or kids and the parents are gone and she is trying to figure out how to get her family back and she she's really in a panic state at certain times but uh she's she's a leader and she's finding her voice and uh there are a lot of details on this lunar outpost but uh it, it's ready to go but give, give me one second one second we're ready to uh, get started and I'll, I'll i'll lead into it whenever you guys are ready thank you all right narrator chanel take it <coughs> well the oh. music i was going to do the music cue i'm sorry and then lead right into chanel here we go Alone in a Galactic Revolution, written by J.D. Ellaby. Interior, inverted pool, dusk, Landor Lunar Outpost, year 2251. Music cue, Everybody Loves the Sunshine, by Roy Ayers. A softly toned teenage girl floats on her back in a sleek black bodysuit. The rays of Landor's binary sunset peek through a narrow window and kiss her lightly freckled face. A sly grin forms as her brother's neon purple aqua drops pulsate in her ears. He won't mind if I use these. The time delay triggers. She takes a quick breath and rolls onto her stomach as the inversion lap pool begins to rise to the ceiling. Captured by the water, Narveen flows to the surface and deploys a silver coin-sized disc. A large black screen appears on the empty basin below. And music cue. Family time begins to play. 16-year-old Jameer Rance and 11-year-old Narveen are in a lush green yard. Stand, Stand still. still. Jameer foils Narveen's relentless attempts to place him onto her famous figure four-leg lock. <laughs> You'll get him one day, baby girl. Narveen jumps onto her brother's back and he promptly flips her onto the ground. She's pissed. Mom walks out just as Narveen is attempting to get up. Stay down, you little... Hoping for sympathy, Narveen shoots Mom a sad glance while grabbing a fistful of soft clay. Don't look at me, little lady. With everyone's attention on Mom, a clump of dark brown clay smacks squarely against her brother's forehead. He's stunned and Narveen is upright and charging. Galaxy girl. Jameer's eyes bug as he clutches his privates. Mom steps in, plucks Narveen from midair, and rolls her onto her own figure four. Not fair. Not fair. Let me up. Gonna tap or what, little bit? Narveen taps a silver tab on her sleeve, loading Star Ancestral Journal Protected Files. We see J and T of Rance watching a monitor in their kitchen. Breaking news. Asteroid vorts into black hole. 14 dead, 12 missing. This is the latest in a rash of outer rim mining tragedies. Tune in for further updates. So no mention of the Orma rescue team? J reaches for Tia's hand and pulls her onto his lap. Narveen pauses the video and stares at the frozen images. A youthful, brown-skinned, freckle-faced man and an elegant, natural beauty are caringly looking into the screen. Has to be the wrong file. Narveen unpauses the video. I'm sure you recognize my voice, but now you can finally see me. Us. We've met before. Have we? I like the audio better. Hit her quick, Jay. Jay shoots Tia a half-serious side-eye. If done correctly, you are 16 and finally able to access the section. Short version, 
massive DNA heists, rogue AI fleets raising orphan colonies, and asteroids vorting like cosmic whirlpools. I'm telling you. Tia addresses the camera. Sweetheart, he believes that you two have met in your dreams. I'm even beginning to believe. I bet your freckles look just like his. Can you see me right now? Yes. Yes, you can? We hear Tia questioning Jay from another room. Yes, I left the toilet seat up. Narveen mouths, wow. Jay addresses the screen. It's 2037 and space mining is a reality. I'm sure some of your friends were forced to volunteer. Still floating and laser focused on the screen. My brother and so many others. Only boys for now, but no one is safe. All the money, like I've told you. Tia re-enters and realizes that Jay has hit Narveen with the heavy version. I think she's had enough for today. Don't stop, I wanna follow the money. Jay shows Narveen a DNA-secured thumb drive. She touches a similar one that's connected to her choker. Rance, step by step. Rance, right back at ya. She needs to hear this. Tia sits, puts her finger on Jay's lips, then blows a kiss at the screen. Jay gives a blank stare and mouths something. You are the one for my dreams. Before the camera stops, Jay blurts out. Protect your DNA. We'll all be cloned. Your other you is out there. Believe. In transmission appears on the screen. Caught off guard, but very intrigued. She stares blankly at the words on the pool floor. What was that? The normalizer triggers and the pool glides back into the lower basin. She rests on the edge. Feet still floating. Jameer has to hear this. Interior bedroom on her bed. Clone mercenaries, rogue AI, stolen DNA, mining slaves? Wow. Curled up under her quilt, a slideshow of family pics is projected onto the ceiling. She watches until she falls asleep. Interior bedroom morning. Narveen awakens, washes up, grabs a smoothie, and heads to the roof to inspect one of Jameer's special projects. Exterior rooftop morning, moments later. She shields her eyes from the twin stars, gives Jameer's copper platform a quick once over, and angles their solar arrays towards the Trangoon Mountains. Exterior rooftop continuous. Two blue and white racing drones zip through the nearby hovering turbine fields. Amateurs. The dermal alarm vibrates her hand and glows blue. As she heads inside, the monthly unmanned munitions transport passes overhead. She logs its arrival time. Interior, safe room server closet. Narveen places a graphene and copper necklace around her neck, situates the AR visor, and quickly logs onto the server. Took you long enough. Holograms of the two appear inside a classic 1980s arcade. Narveen looks around, nodding her head. She skips up to Karate Champ and pounds the two-player button. Let's get it. Mom's not here to save you. She begins attacking the controls. Jameer isn't playing. He's smiling and staring back at his baby sis. Narveen, what's up? She stops and lowers her head. When are you coming back? I can't do this. I promise I'll see you soon. Her hologram begins to cry. Are they dead? Who's dead? Mom and Dad. Of course not. It feels like they'll never come back. You've got to trust me. I have a plan for us. Narveen's screen glitches and a tall red-headed figure flashes in and out of focus. One of your friends? Server is empty. Well, a tall redheaded dude is right in front of Donkey Kong. Look! Hey, Rance. Tell the kid thanks for the help. Log out. You know him? Log out and reset the system. Jameer sends a high-pitched signal into the room. 
the Federation's rogue hacker shatters into a pile of Auburn nano dust. We can stay. He's in pieces. Who's seen our server? Jameer's hologram flickers and begins to fade. You're breaking up. I'm sorry. His image blinks away. We see Narveen's breath as she exhales in disappointment. She logs out and snatches the visor from her head. Interior, server room, server rack. Two rows of tiny blue lights illuminate after the hard wires, the frequency band into the galactic block. The trace program activates. She checks the video monitors and exits through a hidden door. Interior, hallway. Her left palm vibrates green. Encrypted alert from Jameer. She reads the message and screams. Ah! It's my fault! Exterior space, Solteris felt hours later. A massive asteroid vorts uncontrollably into the heart of the Peralta Nebula. An empty escape pod is spinning in the distance and headed directly into the Alsharan Channel. Gypsy One, we're responding to multiple Mayday alerts. Please advise. Gypsy One, this is Mission Control. Come in. Exterior, space, moments later. Six lifeless bodies tethered to one another come into view. Their uniforms are shredded and covered in obsidian grit. Sm smash cut to. Lone miner drifting and engaging his malfunctioning thruster. Gypsy one, come in. C control, mayday. Muscles twitching due to lo low oxygen levels. He activates his locator beacon before passing out. Drifting towards the Alsharian channel, he catches a glimpse of the partially torn name patch on his right shoulder. We see the letters R, A, N, C. Interior bedroom following day. Narveen slides into a fitted midnight blue graphene bodysuit. She loads her drone and attaches a silver scooter to her enforced gravity pack. Interior back doorway. Before heading out, she plucks three nectarian tomatoes and fills her water container. Exterior light rail platform behind her residence. Music cue, Didn't You Know by Erica Badu. Narveen sprints along a na narrow metal ledge, leaps and dive rolls onto the roof of the Federation's perpetual rail, crosses her legs and surveys the landscape. Hundreds of glacial springs to her left, hacker canals directly beneath, and the soft amber glow of the variance runs along the horizon. End music cue. Train approaches Tech Zone. We see Nico's long black ponytail sway while Erdok's rustic brown afro gives off unusual glints of red. Another heated discussion. Exterior, second floor balcony, Tech Zone. Four falafel wraps fall from a random drone. Rena, a coding savant, winks at the guys. Erdok tosses his over the ledge. I could have taken that home, jackass. Every day? Erdok peers into the bustling courtyard. Rena beams when she sees Narveen's train approaching. Calm down. Breathe. Narveen dismounts and targets Erdok. She walks past Rena, bursts into a sprint, and launches herself towards her stunned foe. Music cue. Night of the Living Baseheads by Public Enemy. Amber bolts of lightning erupt just as Narveen's right arm hooks onto the flailing Erdok's neck. Both tumble over the balcony's ledge. Oh, shit! Rena and Nico run to the ledge. End music cue. Exterior, courtyard, moments later. Kids are scattering. Tables and chairs are strewn. Narveen is on her back, clutching her side in pain. Erdok is lying on the table next to her. His right shoulder is dislocated. Exterior, courtyard, continuous. Wide-eyed gamers press their pimpled faces against the window in an internet cafe. Several trickle into the courtyard, phones in hand. Narveen zones out, staring at the canopy bar that broke her fall, and possibly her ribs. Get up, Narveen. Finish this. 
slowly moving to her feet. She fights to ignore the piercing pain on her right side. Erdok is on his knees, bracing against the chair, right arm hanging. What's your problem? She kicks the chair that he's leaning on. I should kill you. Larveen, why are you... She yanks the collar of his jumper and drags his heavy frame to the edge of the berm. He resists. She knees his right shoulder and he howls. Jameer trusted you. I trusted you. Erdok's eyes frantically bugs as he feels his wirely levers slide into position. She adjusts her grips, latches on with her legs, and down the berm they go. Nico and Reno follow. Do something. Hell no. Kick his ass, Narvina. Dust settles. Narvina is applying a perfect rear naked chokehold. Nico attempts to separate them. Narvina cuts at her eyes, winces, and forcefully grunts. Stay back. Erdok squirms as his alpha facade evaporates. Rena stands frozen, jaw hanging. Erdok hollers in agony as he rolls onto his injured shoulder. He blacks out for a moment. Tap out! Fucking tap! Erdok feverishly taps, mumbling to herself. Narveen refuses to release. Let him go. He gives up. A large group streams to action. The buzz, on the, the buzz of the drone sends Narveen into a trance. Erdok attempts to slide free. Two drones collide and explode into a fiery blue methane burst. The crowd erupts. Narveen snaps out of her daze. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, J Jameer wasn't... Punishing him for his betrayal, she arches her back and applies full pressure to his airway. Your family signed my brother's death warrant. Admit it. Erdog drifts in and out of consciousness. Not yet. Wake up. She roughly jostles him. No, let me explain. Shut up. I know the story. Tears streaming. She searches for the strength to finish Erdok. Opens her eyes, dar darting them in all directions. She catches a glimpse of a little girl with a terrified look on her face. Jameer? She releases Erdok. He yells in agony as he rolls onto his stomach. The teenage heavy crowd roars with laughter. On her feet, Narveen is slightly bent over and clutching her ribs. Standing, but slumped, Erdok backs away and heads toward the nearby canals. Look, he's running away. Two red-headed twins, Tin, emerge from the crowd and follow Erdok. He stops, looks back at Narveen, and holds up a blood-stained hoop earring. Time appears to stand still. The chaos is muted. She touches her torn right lobe and delivers an unflinching glare. Next time, I won't let go. Music cue. My Sacrifice by Creed. All right, Scenes. guys. Carol might be um, caught up on set, so I will step in here. Well done. Very well.